Hi, Maria here. Welcome to my channel. Today, I want to share with you like a mini haul and then a couple fragrances that are brand new releases. I give you my thoughts on them, whether I think that they're worth a sniff or maybe even a full bottle. So I'm really excited. But before I get started, if you haven't subscribed, just go ahead and hit that button. Join the Weird and Wonderful family. It would be amazing to have you part of the community. And with that, thank you to all my new subscribers over the past like couple of months I've gotten like 500 uh, new subscribers so thank you so much for uh, choosing to subscribe and becoming part of this uh, wonderful community. I just love our community. I'm sure that you will too. They're such a positive amazing group of men and women so yeah that's it. Let's get started. So one fragrance that has been fairly hyped up over the past little while is Sugar Leather by Unui Nomad. Now oftentimes when you see uh, fragrances pop up that are fairly new a bunch of influence influencers on TikTok, Instagram, and YouTube start talking about it, it's likely because they've been sent to the influencers, which is the case for this. So um, I chose to get this closer to fall because I thought it would be of a more fall type fragrance being it was more of a leather centric fragrance. Um, interestingly, uh, this one is light enough that you could probably wear it in the summer, like a summer evening. This would be super sexy. Um, in the fall, winter, spring, you could wear this even in the daytime. This is a delicious kind of intoxicating, addictive, uh, sugary leather fragrance. So the name is perfect for it. So you have to like leather in order to enjoy this. This is definitely unisex, uh, but the sweetness of it makes it certainly wearable. Like sometimes leather comes across as harsh, a little bit masculine. With the amount of sugar that's in this one, I would say it's very, very wearable for women, especially if you like to kind of rock the naughty fragrances. So this has got a little bit of a naughty component because it's leather. Like, I, I don't know. I just associate leather with naughtiness. I don't know if I should. I don't know what the deal is there, but that's just kind of what I associate it with. Maybe because I find it sexy. Like, it's just sexy. The notes in this are caramel, cinnamon, labdanum, leather, and amorous. Now, both labdanum and amaris are more kind of that balsamic kind of piney feel. I don't really get a whole lot of that. I get a little bit of kind of that resin, like a sweeter resin or sap. Um, I definitely get the caramel and the sugar combined with that leather. And it's just absolutely mouthwatering. Now, the interesting thing about this fragrance is that it's kind of light and airy, which is what I find with a lot of Unui Nomad fragrances. There's, I think, one that I would consider a little bit heavier, uh, Suma Oriental. Um, I'd have to smell more of them, but overall, uh, from the ones that I've smelled so far, um, there's this light, airy component to them. So lots of space in the fragrance never feels cloying. Even if it's got notes like leather and car caramel, it's not going to feel sticky or too thick because somehow it just has space uh, in, the, in the fragrance. I don't know if that makes sense for any of you that know what I mean. Maybe you can elaborate more. Um, definitely a beautiful fragrance. It does have that uh, kind of really popular type feel to it, like um, Angel Share, um, Red Tobacco from Mansara, Pascal Morabito's uh, Sultan Noir, um, fragrances like that, Camera. They've all got kind of a bit of a boozy, almost apple pie feel. This isn't apple pie, uh, but I think with the cinnamon, with the sugar, there's a slight tartness to this, at least I find, alongside that leather. I think that this is super beautiful, definitely wearable. Sometimes leathers for female is just a little bit too heavy. This is definitely not heavy, so it's worth a sniff for sure. Uh, the thing that I like about Unui Nomad is you can get uh, their sample kit, Parfum Exquise in Montreal, and they uh, ship uh, to Canada and the US for sure. Uh, they may ship everywhere, but I think Canada, US, North America, kind of, uh, they've started carrying this. So I'll leave that linked, and then I'll also leave the Unui Nomad site 
linked as well. Now being uh, I'm talking about leather fragrances, I thought I would mention Soradora's Mandorle. This one has a suede note, smells like leather. Uh, this one, uh, the leather is very, very present throughout the wear of the fragrance as well. Uh, although it's not represented in the notes, it has almost like an almondy cherry feel to it, which I think is the heliotrope. So what I get is the leather, I get this almost almond cherry feel. You get some rum and caramel. It's very, it's very delicious smelling, but I guess uh, sugared leather to me smells airy and spacious. This smells like you probably spread it on your skin somehow. You know, it smells a little bit thicker. Um, interestingly, this one, um, although it's really potent in the opening, and I find this actually with a lot of the Soradora fragrances, gorgeous fragrances, nice, complex, uh, but they sit closer to the skin. So I just love the addictive quality of the, like of every one of the, the ones that I have, love them. Love the scent profile in this. Just um, as far as projection and whatnot, it sits definitely closer to the skin. So this is more of a close encounters type fragrance. On the other hand, Sugar Leather, it definitely has much more projection and longevity. I'd say you get at least three hours of decent projection and you can smell it like, like you can smell it like this from this distance for like four, four or so hours, whereas the Mandorle, you've got to get right up there to smell it. Maybe, like I said, if you oversprayed. Um, so this one, more airy, a little bit sweeter. This one's a little bit more sexy, sultry, I would say. Um, you could actually mix the two and they would work fine. So you could wear this during the day uh, for the, that colder weather time and then put this on, just kind of add a little bit of complexity to it. So both nice fragrances, depends on what you're looking for. Um, they're, it's not like they're redundant. They just both have leather in them. Now, another fragrance, uh, this house was completely new to me. That fragrance house is called Khalil T. Paris and the fragrance is called kryptonite. So um, I had no idea what to expect from this fragrance. Very new fragrance house. I think they have two offerings out. I was, uh, and just so you know, a lot of times I'll do the unboxings on Instagram and give a little mini review on them. So I'll leave my Instagram down there for you if you're interested in getting on that. Cause usually I'll do my unboxings on there and just talk briefly about the fragrances. So love the bottle. Uh, like I love this green kind of of textured sticker. I don't know why, but I just think it looks so beautiful. Love the color of green. It's just gorgeous. Love the magnetic cap. Like you can't beat it. The fragrance is very, very interesting. Now this is very different than anything else that I have in my collection. And I, when I read the notes, I was like, oh no, this is going to be a scrubber for me. But on first spray, I was just blown away at how beautiful this is. Again, it feels really airy. And I don't know if it's the aldehydes that caused this, that, that, but it definitely feels very delicate somehow. In the opening of Kryptonite, you have aldehydes and tonka bean, which is really interesting because normally tonka bean is in the base notes. In the heart, you have iris, jasmine, sandback, and cedar. I don't get a whole lot of jasmine. I get more iris than anything. And then in the base, you have almond and sandalwood. So this is, there's a sweetness to this. It's not overpowering, but it's a massive projector. So um, both my dad, I, had, I just had gotten this and my dad was over and so was my sister Coralie. So I sprayed it on my dad. He instantly thought it was beautiful. And my sister Coralie went, oh, that's amazing because she could smell, smell it in the air. So definitely projects nicely. This thing is beast mode in performance. So it projects for at least five hours, which most fragrances don't project that long. Like they'll stay around for a while, but they won't project that long. The longevity on this is like 12 hours as far as it um, being on the skin and being present. So as it dries down, you get a lot more of that iris coming out. And normally I'm not a fan of iris because I find it quite powdery. Powdery yet sweet, yet somehow soothing. Um, I really, really enjoy this fragrance. It would be a fragrance that I would consider to work really well in office settings. It would be amazing as a signature fragrance. Like I can see 
definitely this being a signature fragrance. There's a, a slight hint of sweetness, but it's not cloying. It's not overly floral. Um, it's airy. The aldehydes don't smell perfumey. This is aldehydes done in a modern, uh, current way. Uh, so it adds almost a bit of sparkle to it or, um, yeah, just some pizzazz, uh, but it, it doesn't smell like perfumey uh, like aldehydes can. Like when I think of aldehydic, I think of Chanel number no. five. This is definitely not that. So the aldehydes just add some lift to the fragrance, give it a little bit of a delicate quality, and yet it's just such a powerhouse. So really, really impressed with this fragrance. Definitely not my normal MO. Uh, but really, really enjoy this. And like I said, this would be to me signature scent worthy, office fragrance worthy. Um, it's definitely different, uh, but very, very pleasant. So if someone smells it on the air, it's not going to be overpowering in any way. You're going to get the fragrance. It's just going to be a sweet, beautiful classy style of fragrance. I, I'm, I'm just so impressed with this. With the look of the bottle and everything, I anticipated super masculine. And I asso associate this probably, like definitely guys could wear it, but I find this a little feminine leaning, uh, even though the bottle to me looks kind of a little bit masculine in the color. It's definitely unisex, but you know, just that hint of sweetness and a little bit of that powdery floral from the iris gives it kind of a more feminine vibe to me. Those are my thoughts. Really, really impressed with this one. So the next fragrance that I tried is one of the brand new fragrances from Narciso Rodriguez, and it's All of Me. Uh, and as soon as I thought of All of Me, all I could think of was All of Me. Boom, boom. Why not take all of me? Can't you see? I'm no good without you. Please take my heart that once was a blur. And why not take all of me? I don't know why, but like as soon as I hear that, that's the only song I think of. And I think it was with the movie with Lily Tomlin back in the day. I think Steve Martin, Lily Tomlin, and I just love that movie as a kid. They switched places uh, and it was like comedy, comedy and disaster ensued, but I just love that movie. Maybe I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that was the movie. <laughs> anyway, uh, tried all of me. Now I was anticipating because I fell in love with Narciso Rodriguez, Mas Noir Rose, uh, you know, I was thinking that it would be something in that line. It was completely different. So it wasn't in their regular bottles. Definitely its own thing, not a flanker of the things that we've come to know and love. Um, this was a magnolia fragrance. So it opens with magnolia. It has rose and geranium in the middle and musk and sandalwood in the base. So it seems as if it would have that musky feel and I guess it did have a bit of musky feel. It was definitely floral. It felt quite sweet. It was a little bit airy. It felt almost as if there was a bit of fruity floral in there. To me it came across as that sweet floral that you would find like that I, I associate with peony if that makes sense. So uh, it was a nice enough fragrance. To me it was very underwhelming. So the longevity on it was mediocre. Like I'd say I got four hours out of it. It stayed a skin scent for longer than that, projected for maybe an hour. It was okay. Um, it was pleasant. I can see it being an easy reach for some. And I can see people potentially enjoying this, but considering Must Noir Rose uh, and how absolutely gorgeous that was, I, I had really high expectations and this definitely did not meet them. So although it was a nice fragrance, that's all it was. So definitely unremarkable in my opinion, nothing unique. It was just your typical kind of sweeter feminine floral. Uh, felt very designer in nature, kind of a little bit clean, uh, sweet floral. So it wasn't terrible. 
Uh, you definitely need to sniff it. It's always worth sniffing it. But in my opinion, it was just mediocre. I wouldn't recommend this fragrance. Um, I thought it was rather boring, just didn't do anything for me. The, my last one, I wasn't even really interested in trying it, uh, but then I saw it in the store and thought, oh, I'm gonna give it a go, and it's called Burberry Goddess. So it's the newest release of Burberry. Now, uh, for those of you that have been watching the channel for a while, I do really enjoy Burberry Her. It just doesn't sit well on my skin, and really none of the Burberry fragrances that I've tried um, have ever really worked on my skin. So I was just kind of like, okay, this is gonna be the same thing. I was so, so shocked at how beautiful this fragrance was and how uh, well it did on my skin. This is definitely primarily a vanilla fragrance, but it has lavender in it. It has vanilla, lavender, cacao, and ginger in the opening. It has vanilla caviar, which is kind of like the innards of the vanilla, so it's not actual caviar. There's no salt note in this, uh, but it's kind of like the scrapings out of a vanilla pod. Delicious! And then vanilla in the base. So definitely, a, a, a prominent vanilla fragrance, but this definitely had that that lavender in it. So instantly I thought, I wonder how similar this is to YSL's Libre. Now, uh, it wasn't similar at all to me to Mon Guerlain. Um, so I was like, okay, well, how close is it to the, the Libre line? Um, I have never purchased anything uh, from the Libre line. I think my favorite would be the Le Parfum, uh, the Intense I like okay, the original not, not a fan of, but I find the lavender in that one to be rather harsh, feels a little bit prickly, uh, a little bit soapy, um, and it just doesn't quite agree with me. So I've never been able to really, really fall in love with it. I recognize uh, that it's a huge like it's a, a huge love for many women. But for me, I've just never liked the lavender. The lavender in Burberry Goddess, I just think it's stunning. It's the nicest lavender I've smelled. Now, interestingly, I've read online a lot of people saying, oh, it's artificial smelling and whatnot. I found this to be a much more palatable lavender, even if you're not a lavender fan. And the reason being is it smells like, it, it basically to me smelled like a custard uh, or like almost like a creme brulee. Uh, so vanilla, but kind of this creamy, delicious, um, uh, sweeter kind of vanilla, like I said, kind of custard-like with lavender mixed in. So almost like a lavender vanilla custard is the feel that I got from it. Not that it's milky, but there is this baking type component to it that I just thought was stellar. I found it to be long lasting, like six to seven hours. Uh, projection wasn't amazing. So I'd say probably two hours. Uh, if I oversprayed more, maybe, but while I'm in that scent bubble, oh my goodness, I just love it. The way it dries down on the skin, I love the way it smelt on my skin. And I tried this on twice in store. So all of me, I tried it once and it didn't have all of me. It had none of me. So Burberry Goddess, um, I tried it on once in store and then I couldn't stop thinking about it and literally was craving it. So went back, tried it again, kind of did a, a big, huge spray everywhere. Loved it. To me, the lavender is kind of underneath that delicious kind of smooth, uh, creamy vanilla. It doesn't smell like a heavy vanilla. It smells kind of light, like to me, like a vanilla custard. Like that's just kind of the feel it had. So the van the lavender is just under that, whereas in something like Lieb, I find that the lavender, even in the Le Parfum, even in the Intense, definitely more present. In Burberry Goddess, that lavender does last pretty much the whole entire time. But as it dries down, it gets a little bit more underneath, like you're smelling, smelling like maybe a couple little flecks of lavender in this delicious, decadent, somehow uh, creamy, custardy vanilla smell. 
I love the way it is on my skin. It smells substantial, yet not cloying. I big time want a bottle of this one. Like seriously, it is so good. So please, if you've tried any of these fragrances, weigh in, let me know what you think. Um, out of all of them, to be honest, the standout for me was Burberry Her. These ones are all beautiful. Um, love them, really excited to have them. But the Burberry Her one, I literally can't stop thinking about it. Like I seriously cannot stop thinking about it. So that one is definitely going to be a purchase for me. Um, as far as all of me, it has none of me, uh, not into it. If you've tried any of these fragrances, please weigh in and let me know what your thoughts are. And other than that, I hope you have an amazing week and we'll talk to you soon.